this well actually thank you that i can come into your homes that i can come into to you at your work or wherever you are with your families this easter is very out of ordinary extraordinary it's a special easter where we get to be quiet and at home alone in a way that is a privilege to become quiet and to reflect on what jesus has done but today we celebrate that jesus has risen he is risen he is risen indeed i can only imagine what it must have been like for the disciples on that first morning after they had been locked away in this room afraid of the jewish people who had crucified their friend and their master they must have been filled with sorrow they must have been afraid for the future not knowing what is going to happen and then some of their group some women in their group went to the tomb they wanted to finish the burial tradition and when they got there the stone was rolled away and jesus was risen he was alive who would ever have expected or even dreamt of jesus being risen being raised from the dead and alive he is the victor he has won the victory and he wants to share that victory with us and so today we're going to praise jesus for what he's done we're going to thank him we're going to honor him because he is the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. song for today it's psalm 118 shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous the lord's right hand has done mighty things the lord's right hand is lifted high the lord's right hand has done mighty things i will not die but live and will proclaim what the lord has done the Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous, I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. 
through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Heavenly Father, we praise you for sending your Son Jesus to die for us. But most importantly also, that he was raised back to life. We praise you, Jesus, because you are alive. You are alive today, and you reign. You are in charge. You are the King of Kings. You are the victor. And we honor you and we praise you, Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The epistle reading for today is found in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 11. The resurrection of Christ. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word that I preached to you, otherwise you will have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also as one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I am I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. This is the epistle reading. The Gospel reading, the good news for today, is found in Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. Jesus has risen. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early, on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the woman went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. And now let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that you are alive. Thank you that you come to us in our rooms, at home, wherever we are. Lord, you are everywhere. And so we can come to you and praise you. We can pray and hear your word. And this is what we want to do now. Open our hearts to your word. Amen. I love the story of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. I want to read this story. This is from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about 11 kilometers from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed them over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find this body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him, strongly stay with us for it is nearly evening the day is almost over and so he went in to stay with them when he was at the table with them he took bread gave thanks broke it and gave to it gave it to them then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight 
They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. Here ends the reading. For millennia, people have been looking for something, waiting, yearning for something that is missing. Many people have been looking for it their whole lives, filling it with riches and, and entertainment and relationships, but never quite filling that empty space. And so many people with this yearning, this emptiness, they move from job to job, from relationship to relationship, even continent to continent. And they didn't have to do any of this. They didn't have to open any new doors. The only one they needed to open was their heart to the truth, to the God who created them, who knows them and loves them. This yearning for something, this yearning and longing is a longing for truth, for the living Word of God, for a loving relationship with our God, with our Father. It is a, a loving, it is a yearning to be in a loving, healing and good relationship with our Father. It is a yearning that God gives us, awakens in us. He created us to be in this relationship. And so when it's not there, we long for it. It's as if our souls are starving. We long to find that answer. And do you know what the answer is? Do you know what the answer is to that longing, that emptiness that you feel? That longing to be filled and fulfilled. It is Jesus Christ. He is the answer. The God who created everything came to earth as Jesus Christ, fully God and fully human. Jesus, even though he was God, did not see himself as equal to him. He put off his divine power and he became a human being. He lived and he taught about the love and kingdom of God. He taught that God is near. He loved the people that he encountered. He loved all people so much that he was willing to die on the cross for them, for me, for you. He, the only and one, the one and only Son of God, willingly died on the cross after he was hated, was mocked, was beaten, was flogged, was ridiculed. After he was made to carry his own cross outside the city walls, after he was nailed to a cross and hung to die, he still loved us. He loved you. And on the third day, God raised Jesus from the dead. He resurrected Jesus and gave him life. And now Jesus sits at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. And he reigns supreme. And so today is a special day. It's Easter. It's not about bunny rabbits or eggs or any of these things. It's a celebration of this resurrection of Jesus, that he broke the power of death, that he paid the consequences for what we have done, the shameful thoughts and words and actions that we have done, everything that you've experienced and done, he paid the consequences for that. And because of him, we can receive forgiveness. But it didn't end there. Jesus didn't stay in the tomb. He rose again on the third day, on the morning of that third day. But it's surprising how often we expect too little. The woman who went there expected the stone to be in front of the tomb. We struggle to believe that we can be loved or be forgiven or be accepted. The disciples struggled to believe and even anticipate that Jesus would be alive. That's what the story of Emmaus is about. These two, they, even though they heard the woman say Jesus is alive, they didn't believe it. In fact, they weren't even convinced that he was the Messiah anymore. When they described to Jesus who he was, they said he was a prophet. 
But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem us, the Messiah. They had hoped that Jesus was the one, in their opinion, who would reign on earth forever. But then he died. And the disciples, all of them, hid away in a room, away from the danger that they thought was out there. And suddenly, Jesus was alive. Some of them believed straight away, but many of them did not. I immediately think of Thomas, the doubting disciple. He said, I will not believe unless I put my hands in his hands and his feet and in the womb in his side. And that's exactly what happened. It was only after he saw Jesus and touched him that he believed. And the disciples on the road to Emmaus, they didn't expect Jesus. They were debating all of these things that had happened and talking about scripture and yet not understanding. Because how could they? How could they believe that Jesus was alive? Nothing like this had ever happened before. But then suddenly a stranger comes and walks alongside him. And the stranger starts to explain everything that Scripture, the Old Testament for them, said about the Messiah, about Jesus. He explained to them from Moses the beginning through to the prophets in the end, all the prophecies and everything that the Messiah had to endure and suffer and that he would be raised from the dead. And then when they had invited him into their home, when he broke the bread and gave it to them, their eyes were open and they recognized him. He was in his heavenly body. And they also realized this this was Jesus. Weren't our hearts burning, yearning, as he unfolded scripture, as he explained it to us. And this is what it is like to encounter Jesus. When you hear the words of truth, Your heart starts to burn. Your heart starts to yearn for something. It's as if your soul has been starving and suddenly it gets food. Or if you have been only experienced hard-hearted, callous relationships and suddenly someone gives you compassion and the floodgates, floodgates open and the tears flow. That's what it's like. This burning in your heart, you know that it's a drawing to the truth because God created that space for himself in your heart. And I want to share with you today this message. That Jesus is alive and he comes to you. I know that it is unexpected. How can God come to me? Who am I? I've done such shameful things. How can God forgive me? How can he love me? But the reality, the truth and the message for today is that he does love you. He died for you. He died for you and he's with you in your home right now, in your vehicle. He's with you wherever you are. And if you've been experiencing this burning, I invite you today to give your life to Jesus. If you've been experiencing this burning, then pray these words with me. Heavenly Father, While I was listening, my heart was burning. Lord, there's an emptiness in my life, and I'll ask you to fill it, Lord. I've been filling it with all sorts of things that have been bad for me. Relationships, things, money, wealth. I've been running after other things, Lord, but they have not made me happy. They have not filled me. They have not given me peace. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. And we ask that you come into our hearts. You fill that space. We surrender to you and we ask that you take us. We want to be yours. Jesus, we know that you died on the cross for us, but we believe also that you were risen, and that you're alive and with me. I am yours. Take me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us worship this amazing Lord of ours with this next song. And for you, if you pray that prayer with me, if you've given your life to God, and I encourage you to make contact with the pastor, with someone that can pray with you and guide you, can even uh, message us if that's possible, make contact with someone who can lead you and help you and pray with you. Amen.
and pray with me. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we praise you that you are alive, that you are with us. Life is not about us, it's about you. To you be all glory and honor. May my life be about you. Heavenly Father, help us to share, to share this message with others. Lord Jesus, to Go out and believe. Lord, we don't want to be in chains anymore. We don't want to be in the chains of guilt and of fear. We want to be free. And we don't have to be chained anymore. We are free. Jesus, you died for us. You are the victor, the conqueror, the king of kings. And we are your children. You have given us freedom. For your sake, the Father forgives us and loves us. We belong to you. And Lord, we also ask you, the King of Kings, the Almighty, that you heal this nation, that you heal all those who are sick. Heavenly Father, that you protect those doctors and nurses and all those who are in danger because of their work with this COVID-19 virus. We pray for all those who are not only sick with COVID-19, but with cancer and all other sicknesses. We pray for those who are alone. We pray for those who are struggling with hopelessness and depression. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who feel lost, who feel that they are blown about by the winds of this world. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you be our anchor, our hope, the rock on which we stand. Let today be a new beginning. We praise you. We love you. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we pray together with the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now go in the peace and the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>